Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Today on the show, we have Suzanne Jen Taylor. The company is called Creative Raven, and they actually demystify digital marketing for a very specific niche in the wastewater management and treatment sector. So Susan, I want to know how you landed in such a specific marketing deal here. It's very interesting. At the time that I got into this industry, I had my own agency. And it was another specialty niche market of specialty healthcare and medical device and pharmaceuticals, pharmaceutical deployment. And I saw that I woke up one morning and just, God, this isn't fun anymore. It's just like I was burned out. This just isn't fun. And I see this little ad in a newspaper. And if anybody knows anything about Palm Springs, it's basically a resort town. There isn't much manufacturing or anything. And it said, high tech manufacturer looking for a marketing consultant to help them get to the next level. And I thought, okay. So I answered the ad went in to meet with them. Three hours later, I said to the owner, I said, you don't need a marketing consultant. You really need a full-time person with everything that you shared with me about where you want to go with this company. And he said, well, could we have you? And I said, well, make me an offer I can't refuse because I would, I said, I'd have to sell my business. He said, okay. So he, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse, sold my book of business to my subcontractors and went to work for this company. And it was a great run until they got bought out by a huge conglomerate. And anybody who's been there knows it's not a question of if you're going to get laid off, it's when you're going to get laid off. I knew it was coming, started putting out the feelers and was basically working two jobs, building my agency, working with other companies within this market sector that weren't in competition, obviously, for no conflict of interest. So that when the layoff slip came, I wasn't shocked and I was ready and I just hit the ground running. But I also had a very, very dear friend who passed last year, who really gave me a start in helping me and introducing and opened some doors for me within the industry. I love it. I just decided to stay with it and really became a specialist. And my nickname in the industry is I am known as the doo diva because I know stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. Can you... Tell the story of how you actually sold your business to your subcontractors. Well, I just, I reached out to them and said, listen, I have this opportunity to go work with this high tech company and I'm burned out. And I just reached out and I said, would you like to take, you've been like the lead in working with me on managing this account. Would you like to take it over? And they were like, well, sure. Why not? So I just, I kind of worked with the new company and the old company to segue for, for a couple months. They gave me some freedom to do that as I was transitioning and just kind of made that introduction to my client saying, listen, I have this opportunity. I'm moving on, but you've been working with so-and-so has been a right-hand person in this. They're going to be taking over the account. Are you okay with this? I'm not going away. If you have questions, I'm still here. And so I, I gave it that nice transition because it had been a long time of trust, but they also knew that I wasn't just cutting and running, that even like six months down the road, sometimes a client would reach out to me and ask me a question and say, okay, well, let's get on a call. I have to do it after hours. And they were really good about that. So I wanted to make sure that they felt like I wasn't just abandoning them, that they were being left in good hands and that I was going to be there to make sure that the transition took place very, very smoothly. And it went really well. It went really, really well. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's It doesn't normally go that way. So, Well, I had those kind of relationships with my clients, just like I do right now. I mean, I have, I have some customers actually that have been working with me since we started the agency. I mean, I, I was just looking as like, how long, one of my clients says, Jesus, man, how long have we been working together? And I looked at the calendar. I said, do you realize we've been working together since 2005? And they're like, wow. And I don't know a lot of agencies that had that kind of client relationship longevity. Right. You know? I mean, who, who else are they going to go to in the water management sector who's such a specialist? Yes. It's a very unusual market in that it's not really B2B. It's more B2G. And it's very unique in that you have to work on specsmanship selling. It's an extremely, typically very long sales cycle in that you're either dealing with a capital equipment purchase or a capital improvement project. And so 
a short sales cycle would be six months. And people say, oh yeah, tell me when one of those has happened. So it's more like 12 months. Typical average is 18 months to 24 months. And so it really takes a lot of, I would say, fortitude and tenacity to really market within this industry sector and knowing how they're going to buy. And it's, it, I think it was that that very special knowledge that I gained from working with this manufacturer that really has enabled me to be a force for good in this industry. You're going to win the bid because you're the one. So B to G, that stands for business to government? Yes. So how does that marketing look in winning the contracts? A lot of times you're dealing with a bid situation. So the key is to make sure that you're staying top of mind that you're selling on your features and that you find a champion within that entity, whether it be a consulting engineer or within the municipality or maybe with a contractor that has been awarded that contract, that they are going to be your champion so that when they go out to bid, they're going to develop a bid and write some things in that are going to favor what you bring to the table. So that even if you're not in a low bid, you're going to win the bid because you're the one that can meet that spec, that specific criteria that they want for that project. Sometimes it's a matter of getting on these, what they call cooperative buy boards, that they know they have a budget and they can say, all right, I've been given a budget of $200,000 for a new CCTV truck. And I want all these features. And then they can go onto the buy board and buy what they want based on the spec has already been done based on the budget they've been given. So there's all different ways that it can, this sole source bidding, it's as a whole nother, I mean, we could do a podcast just on how you do specs and ship selling and how you sell, but it's also education-based selling because they're not going to buy, it's not like they're going to go online and buy a part from Amazon. Nobody's going to spend $200,000 on something off of a purchase on Amazon. They're going to do their due diligence. They're really going to research it and then they're going to want a field demo. And then it's keeping yourself top of mind of, why mine over the next guy? Why do you want to work with me? We and could so do a podcast on a specsmanship selling. It's yeah. a different topic. <laughs> it's a totally different topic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting way of, especially in a long form of virtual selling, in a long sales cycle. So let's get into it. What, what does that look like? What, what you mean like a long sales cycle? Like, like the specsmanship selling. Selling, okay. You're reaching out to someone and it's really educating the market and staying top of mind with them of not, hey, you're ready to buy. Hey, you're ready to buy. Annoying them that way through digital and content. It's, hey, I just found this interesting piece of content that I thought, or it's something that you've either produced or you're curating, that I thought would be really helpful for you. And just kind of staying in touch with that person as a go-to trusted resource. So they're going to be like, hey, John really understands my pain points. He understands what would be helpful to me. So this is someone that, hey, if I'm going to spend this kind of money, I want to work with his company because I know he gets me. So I'm going to do everything that I can to give that company the best shot when I talk to my higher ups of, I really want company ABC's equipment, or I want to work with ABC contracting for this project because I know they're going to have our backs. And so it's by staying that, again, top of mind with content and education that is useful, they're going to remember you. They're going to see you in a favorable light. And even their boss is going to, because they're going to say, hey, this guy really, this he sent me this piece of content six months ago. And let me tell you, it really saved us with this problem when we were working with this. It didn't have anything to do with his equipment. But let me tell you, boss, it saved our butts. Maybe it saved us X number of dollars, or maybe it saved us an overtime, or maybe we didn't have, we didn't have a problem with a customer out in the field. They really understand us. I really want to work with this company. And so it's that kind of approach that we are now in a virtual selling environment. It's kind of like there's that timeline that's been established of gone are those days of just knocking on the door and having that meeting or coffee with that guy. It's the purchasing decision model and the stages for it 
have changed and it's never going back. So people are going to do their due diligence in a virtual selling environment. You have to be prepared to sell and present well in a virtual selling environment. And knowing that they're going to be looking at content, they're going to be doing due diligence. So I say there's four levels. They're aware of a problem or a need. And they're kind of aware of a solution and they're going to go out and they're going to find it. They're going to do all their research on you. And then the next step is they're going to start to whittle down those maybe three top contenders that are maybe someone they want to deal with. Then they get to, all right, now I'm going to have the in-person meeting and do that demo and write that spec. And then fourth, they're either going to, there's going to be the win and they're going to sign on the line that half dot. So if you want to survive in this market the way it is now anymore, and I, I would say this not just for B2G, but I would say any B2B sales where it's long selling, it's a high ticket item, high value, very complex. You need to be there present, frequent, persistent in first stage and second stage of that buying cycle. Otherwise, by the time they've narrowed it down, you're not going to have a seat at the table, but your competition is if they've been highly present. So your relationship, it's very different than conventional digital marketing because Absolutely. when I think digital marketing or most people, right, they're thinking of oh, social media ad campaigns, things like that. This is not what you're doing. So can you explain exactly how you come into this scenario? What it has to be is a production of really relevant content and a mix of content that positions that entity, whether it be the person providing a service, a contractor, or a manufacturer with a piece of technology that is gonna compel that person to want to explore further or begin the dialogue and begin engagement. And so you have to create the trust. And that's so, so challenging now that we are in that virtual environment. So how do we create trust? We have to publish relevant content that talks about not us, but talks about them and their pain points of not saying us, we, but you, you, video, long form content, short form content, so that we're going to be able to attract as many users as possible, delivering the content in the way that they like to receive. So if we come up with a topic, we need to make sure that we produce a video on it, a long form article, and something like what I call cliff notes. For those folks that just want the bullet points, targeted email messaging, either outside it, doing an email or within LinkedIn. And I'm not talking about those email messages that we all get on LinkedIn of, hey, how about if I got you 10 appointments on your calendar, that go away. You don't even know what my audience is. And you're telling me you can get people on my calendar without even getting to know me? No. The secret sauce to that, especially in this type of selling environment of these audiences is one, introduce yourself. Talk a little bit about your credibility and then ask about them. Ask a question to engage that one of mine that's working really well. Hey, what do you see are the most important trends or innovations that or pain points that are coming to light in our industry right now? And I just leave it as an open-ended question. I don't try to sell anything. Next thing, I've got someone on the hook where they're saying, hey, this is what, that, 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 you know, what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to see that. I'm going to reply back. And if it's an interesting dialogue or interesting reply, I'm going to say, hey, would it make sense for us to just kind of network a little and have a call? I'm not going to try to sell them anything. I want to know more about them. So when they get on that call with me, Chad, one of three things is going to happen. Either they're a candidate for one of our services for marketing. Two, they could be a really interesting podcast guest for my Do Do Diva Smells Like Money podcast. Or three, they're interesting enough where they've done some really cool work that the publications that I write for might be interested in a story about them or a project that they've been involved with. And it's like, hey, would you like some free PR? Tell me about that project. Let me run it past my editor. And if he likes it, he's going to give it to me as, a, as, as an assignment. No cost to you except hooking me up with your client or us doing an interview. How does that sound? 
So at the end of the call, no matter what, there's going to be a win-win. Yeah, always going for those win-wins. That's no. so and and you never know who someone knows when you engage with them. Like, don't always be thinking in a virtual selling environment that, oh, I got to get the sale on the first call. No, you're not. Go this is something that when we're going from traditional to virtual selling, the people still, a lot of the old, old guard in our industry just don't get. You are not going to get the sale on that first call, nor should you expect it. It's going to take you two, three, four engagements. It's about developing the relationship. And how can I begin to sell you something unless I know what your challenges are? And if I even have a solution to it, I may need not even be a fit. And maybe your pain point is something different than what I have. But you know what? I may know someone within my network that can solve what you've got. Hey, let me connect the two of you together. And the beauty of that is, Chet, that I'm going to help you solve a problem so that maybe at one point you're going to need what I have to offer. And you're going to remember, hey, she helped me out solving this issue. I'm ready for this now. Maybe I should go back and talk to her. Yeah, these are this is excellent advice. I, I operate under a similar capacity. It's called pay it forward. Yeah. Truly pay it forward. Be of service first and be grateful. That's the other thing. When things are going bad, be grateful. Remember to always be grateful for every little thing you have. Even it's going to sound stupid, but even that that exceptionally good cup of coffee that you made yourself this morning and you're enjoying it, be grateful for it. Yeah, I think that's a perfect place for us to close today on gratitude. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I remember you had said to me, how did you how did you become successful in that niche? And one thing that I would leave with is get into a niche market and be the expert in helping that niche market. What you do, stay vertical, but then expand your service offerings horizontally so that you become a one-stop shop for that vertical. And that has been the model that I've adopted that's really allowed me to grow instead of being jack of all trades, master of none. I want to do everything. If you become a specialist in a vertical, you have the ability to charge more for your services because you have specialized knowledge. You're not a generalist. So if somebody did want to get in touch with you for your specialized services, how could they do so? Check me out on creativeraven.com. Connect with me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn Creative Raven. And we've got a couple really, really cool programs for anybody that is listening. It We have a done with you service. And I call these the C3 programs because content, equals credibility that leads to customers, okay? So we have a done with you service where we help you come up with, we have a court, a course that has a coaching component and then access to a creation, content creation team. We have a white glove done for you service where we come up with the whole strategy and take care of everything for you. But the most exciting thing we've got, I have customers that are coming to me that say, Suzanne, thank you so much for helping me get all this new work, but now I've got another problem. And I said, what's that? He says, now I don't have people to do the work. How can I find good people? So we heard the call and we now have a new course that is going to be launching in June called the Gain, Train, Retain Playbook, which is just for people that are in a contracting, in a co have a contracting service business that are having trouble finding good people and then training them and retaining them. So a lot of good stuff coming down the pike. Again, staying in that vertical. Yeah, well, thank you, Suzanne, for being on the show. And thank, thank you, you for everybody. You. Yeah, definitely. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.